Uh, hi there. I think we should get started. We're running just a little bit late. And as uh, I'm going to channel my inner Dominic and uh, start getting us back on track. By the way, like what an incredible program that we've had. I just want to say like Jamie and Dominic have done just such a fantastic job. I know there were uh, some other people that were helping too, but um, I just have really, really been enjoying all of the sessions and I hope you all are too. Uh, so my name is Selena Deckelman. I'm the Chief Product and Technology Officer for the Wikimedia Foundation. And this session is meant to be primarily a discussion session about commons. Um, I am live streaming like the first part of this, but then we didn't quite uh, get things together to have an online discussion, but we are planning to have future online discussions. So this is just not, this is just like a first uh, conversation will not even the first. This is another conversation in a series of conversations that we're having. So uh, just want to, it's not huge pressure that this is your only chance if for some reason you're listening online and worried about that. We are going to have some more conversations. Uh, so just to get things started, um, let's see. Does that work? Yes. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I think I want to minimize the other window. Let's do that. That work? Sorry. I, th I think we can. I think we can present this opening part. Yeah. 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 I'm just gonna present this opening part. I think that'll be fine. Okay. So there have been a series of conversations about the future of commons. Many, many conversations that do not include me, but. I'm going to take a point of personal privilege here and lead you through the ones that I have been directly part of um, since November of 2022. Uh, some of you may recall that there was this wonderful letter that was put together that I summarized as Think Big. And it was, um, you know, a collection of aspirations and statements of challenges that Commons, commons faces from uh, community members asking the foundation to think a little bigger about commons, which I thought was actually really great. I responded and in that, you know, it was kind of early. I shared some work from the teams, you know, things that people were working on and, and you know, asking folks for um, ideas about what was more important or less important. So you can go back and look at that if you'd like. I, I shared the link actually on the etherpad there's an etherpad link from this from the, the program today. Um, the next piece of my personal history with this is the Commons Technical Needs Survey. There was actually like another conversation that happened related to that, but I was having trouble finding that talk section of the talk page. Uh, but anyway, the Commons Technical Needs Survey got published and in there you'll find a list of prioritized technical needs from the group that worked on that. Um, there's a set of bugs, some of which have been fixed since that was published, a set of features, most of which unaddressed, and then some, some other issues in there. That's kind of interesting if you haven't seen it. Um, there's another discussion that was started by a user, I think it's uh, uh, it's either Spinister or Spinister um, uh, Media Knowledge Beyond uh, Wikipedia. It's very also informative about BIOM perspectives primarily, but, but more beyond that. Um, and from that, you know, I, I had a response to that where I started to talk about some of the big trade-offs that I think we're facing, because through this journey, I've started to see some of the kind of difficult problems and dichotomies, basically, uh, or no, there's other, other words for that, but challenges where you choose one thing, you really are making a trade-off with another thing, um, either in terms of direction of the product, or resourcing or some, some other things. So I tried to talk about that a little bit and that sparked a very lively discussion, which led to a, a series of conversations that I had with individuals and a group at Wikimania. And then I published this post Wikimania proposal for next steps. And in that, what I asked, um, and when I was in person, I also asked was for help from uh, the people who are interested in the future of commons, some of which are people who are really actively engaged in commons, some of which are really actively engaged in other projects, and but deeply invested in what happens with commons. Um, and what I ask for everybody to do is to start to talk to each other more. 
So one of the things that I've found is that um, individuals with very different perspectives are coming to me or other people, and they don't often talk to each other. About, and I think there's a lot to learn. So this is kind of the start of what I hope is like a lot of intensive learning that we do over a relatively short period of time. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd give you all of this context. If you have time to read this, I actually think it would be valuable, at least for this slice of the conversation. And I also really welcome you to send me conversations and things that you've written that you think are important that I haven't seen yet. Because the reality of this is I've only been at the foundation for a couple years. I have a lot of experience in open source, but this area honestly is kind of new to me. You know, and I've learned a lot and I think I have something to bring and to share with you and some experiences of value, but I have a lot more to learn. So please don't be shy. Send me things that you've written because it really helps me understand what's going on. Okay. Let's see if that works. Nope. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to, I swear I'm not going to talk very much more. And I got like two minutes of a video that I want to share that I hope will help kind of set a tone for these conversations. Um, so as part of prep for coming here and also just like thinking about commons in general, we went and had a look at the wiki statistics that are published by our data team. I don't know if all of you have ever seen this. If you haven't, I can share a link on the um, uh, etherpad after this. What it is, it's a snapshot of data from all of the different wikis and it's published in this gigantic spreadsheet and we've done it for many years. Um, uh, so I took some of that. The, well, this first one isn't from the stats, sorry. But <laughs> um, we we were just looking at Commons point of view versus other wikis. And the first thing is that Commons doesn't have an established point of view on neutrality or encyclopedic content. I think that's important um, for everyone to remember when they're engaging with Commons. And not everyone knows that, actually. Uh, but just stating that off the top. Um, and here are some of the stats that we were noticing. First, devices per editor. Um, so what this means is unique devices per editor editing on Commons. So on Commons, it's 825. And for most other wikis, it's 7.5, you know, 7,500 unique devices per editor. And so just in terms of reach, it's a little bit different. And we can talk a lot about what the actual reach of Commons is, right? Because a lot of engagement with Commons is offline. But this is what we have in our could stats. You, yeah. Could you clarify what devices per editor means? Yes, it means the number of unique devices per active editor on Wiki. So, so devices just, are viewers as well. Uh, yeah. So it's just the unique devices, not like page views. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then the revert rate is very low, 1.5% revert rate on Commons versus about 10% on English Wikipedia. 1.4% anonymous edit rate compared to more than 10% on the major wikis. 4% uh, new editor monthly retention compared to 7.9% on English Wikipedia. And technical volunteers have shouldered a lot of the burden of the growth of Commons, which is quite large. It's got 109 uh, million objects. And that is that, and I put this this number here, it's one of many statistics we have on this, but 54.2% of comments edits are bot edits with 171 active bots. And, you know, something that's come up at this conference is when those bots go offline, you know, for different reasons. It's less often that it's because of database rep lag, but it did happen in the last year. Um, but when those bots go offline, it has like a really significant impact to the user experience. Uh, so the conclusions that I just want to share, my own, again, my personal conclusions is that I, I really think we should embrace these differences. Actually, a lot of people that I've talked to agree with that, that we can lean into the not having an established point of view on neutrality and encyclopedic content. That's like opportunity for us. We can lean into the fact that, um, you know, we have this low revert rate. It just, I think that's opportunity for us to experiment. And there are things that are safe to try because we have like, this this kind of environment. Okay. So, oops, oh, I opened this already, but forgot. Okay, I just wanna show this. How many of you here have heard the phrase wicked problem? So not everybody, but a few of you, great. So there's another way to say that, which is um, uh, <laughs> socio-technical systems which is often the way that our Wikimedia ecosystem is described. It's a very short video, but I think it kind of is useful 
context to bring to the discussions we're going to have today. Thank you for indulging me. So there's like 10 like elements of a wicked problem that were defined by um, you know, this researcher who established like a framework around this. And the one that I want to bring into this space most especially is, is this one. There's always more than one explanation for a wicked problem because the explanations vary greatly depending on the individual perspective. I have really found that to be true and I've gotten a lot of value from just like talking to each other. So that's what I'm hoping that we can do today. So you'll see around the room on the whiteboards, we um, labeled these different trade-offs and we have like a, a longer description that um, Kelsey has on paper for each of them. But I was hoping that folks could like get into groups um, and just choose one of these. And I think for time, we might only be able to do one. Or can we do two? We have a block, but we could try like two 10 minute blocks. Okay, so two 10 minute blocks. And what I'm hoping for is when you go to one of these, um, that you'll have a note taker. And then one of the folks that, that I don't really work with is also going to join and help like facilitate the conversation a little bit. But the point is really for all of you to talk to one another, not for one of us to give a speech. Um, <laughs> okay, so the first uh, trade off challenge that I've run into multiple times, which should be familiar to all of you, is categories versus structured data. I illustrated this with a screenshot I took this morning of the word categories. The first image was of a cat. Um, <laughs> um, and that was because I searched for no restrictions. When I searched for any image, it was all cats. But um, there's, there's some challenges here uh, that surface in search, but more generally with categories versus using structured data. And there are some real trade-offs that we would need to make if we choose one or the, another, or the other, including just the long experience that people have with categories. Um, switching is not simple, as many of you here know. So I just think having a conversation about what some of those trade-offs are would be helpful in writing some of those down from your perspectives. Um, another challenge that we face is um, approaching new media, which isn't that new anymore, of course, but just like making it so that we were supporting new media types for video, for example, versus the backlogs that we have for existing media types. There are just over 100 active admins on Commons today, and I know that's not the same as like patrollers that are going through and um, uh, you know moderating media, but it is indicative of the kind of small number of people that we have that can moderate. So if we have a lot more video, what happens on that? That's an important question. Uh, Trade-off number three is thinking about new contributors. So this is an image of um, a protest in Budapest and like, I think it was 2018 and the title of it is, we are the majority. 
That was a great image and it's everybody holding up their cell phones and those are lights coming out of their cell phones. So um, we've done some work recently based on community feedback uh, in Upload Wizard. And what that has done is it streamlined it a little bit, but there's still a lot of friction. And there's also calls to ease contribution to make it much easier to upload things, which causes challenges, right? So I think this trade-off of like how to balance this, you know, again, taking the moderator perspectives uh, in mind, but also the fact that most people are taking photos on their phones now, right? Like it's more than 90% worldwide. Um, in 2023, that was true. So uh, what, what, do, what should we do about this? I think that's a really interesting challenge. Um, tool investment priority. This has come up um, in several sessions as well. Uh, trying, there's a real challenge, especially in the GLAM communities around understanding the impact of contribution. And it's something that institutions are like, hey, we gave you all these images, like what happened? And when we can't communicate that, that's a real problem, right? Um, for people who are trying to digitize uh, collections, you know, among, among many other things. Um, we also have tools that help upload, manipulate, and curate media. And um, it's not necessarily like a totally fixed pie, like which for the other, but like the focus on one or the other, it's like a strategic trade-off most likely for the next couple of years. And the fifth one, and this is kind of like the big, like huge question um, is thinking about focusing on bringing content from commons into Wikipedia uh, versus developing commons into an offering in its own right. I do think that there is a true trade-off challenge here because the kinds of things that we might work on if we were emphasizing one or the other, they will be different. And I'm happy to, you know, I might actually go to this one so I can share if people have questions about that. But even in small group discussions, I think the people who have been involved in commerce for a long time do sort of see this trade-off. But again, happy to elaborate on that um, if that's helpful. And I'll say it's not just about um, bringing content from comments to Wikipedia, it's to, to anything else. Um, and, you know, if, instead of maybe say, trying to make comments into something like Flickr, right? Those are two different approaches to what the purpose of the system might be. Okay, so that's the high level overview. These are the trade-off discussions. And I think now if we could, just self-organize around the different whiteboards, gravitate toward whatever is speaking to you, and then we'll go from there. Oh, we have 